Okay, so thank you for being here. A little introduction about myself. My name is Lois. I'm a data scientist with Government Technology Agency, also known as GovTech, which is a statutory board under the Singapore government. I'm also deployed to Skills Future Singapore, which is another statutory board dedicated to supporting uh, Singaporeans skills development. Now within GovTech, I work in a division known as the AI practice. We serve as the capability center for advancing innovative technologies across the public sector. And this includes AI and graph technologies. So for today's session, we will go through first, what is contextualized insights discovery? Next, we will look at how graph supports us in doing that. Lastly, we will wrap up with some learning points on delivering graph insights to end users. So without further ado, let's go. Now, earlier this year, our team was presented with a use case where we need to distill uh, contextualized insights from a large amount of unstructured text data. This process needs to be dynamic and generalizable, and the insights need to be specific to the organization as well as their service offerings. So after hearing this, we knew that we had to use generative AI for the dynamic insights generation. But the question was, how can we support the LLM generation with an equally dynamic and intelligent brain for data retrieval and processing? So we asked ourselves if tabular data and embeddings, aka a rack system, will be good enough to support this use case. And the answer we got was no, because of issues such as limited LLM context window, the difficulty in consistently embedding and retrieving enterprise knowledge as part of the LLM's output, et cetera. And it became increasingly clear to us that in order to gener generate insights that are contextualized and relevant to specific organizations, we needed to ground our LLM with graph. However, the question wasn't really about choosing between tabular data or graph, but using them together to support the generative AI layer. And our idea was to leverage graph's ability to capture and translate rigid relationships found in tabular data sets into a web of interconnected nodes and edges. And to overcome LLM's context window limitation, we made use of condensed information encoded by graph paths instead of text chunks. Lastly, we want to facilitate the reasoning process by keeping to causality inducing terms for our graph edge labeling. And this is whenever there is a causal relationship to encode. We found that this is especially helpful in the subsequent chain of thought prompting process as well. So many of you here might have already heard of or even implemented your own agentic uh, AI applications. And since this is not really the focus of my sharing today, I'll be really brief about the agentic introduction and instead focus on how we have used the graph as part of our agentic backend setup. Our agentic backend setup basically allows the user to ask a question and our business analyst agent will be able to break it down into subtasks before triaging them to the respective agents. In this case, for each of these respective agents, it will then focus on this subtask and generate an answer by using that suite of tools. And before um, they share back this result with the business analyst agent. Last but not least, a deputy director agent has been put in place to consolidate all of these insights generated together with the supporting data to generate a coherent and contextualized insight before answering back to the user. So now that we have a good view of the end-to-end -end agentic solution, let's come back to some of the preparation steps needed to create our graphs. First, we have established an AI pipeline to ensure that data is clean and ready for graph generation. As we all know, graph nodes and edges are actually highly sensitive to the query terms used. So one way of countering this sensitivity is by running various rationalization steps on the data prior to the graph's creation. The moment we have the clean data, we are ready to create a graph by running document extraction with LLM graph transformer module from Langchain. Once the graph is created, you will soon realize that it resembles that of a hairball, which is, well, part of the original intent, but this also makes it very difficult to use. So in order to decode this rich information captured in the graph itself, our strategy is to separate graph model and graphs based on their purpose. 
Here we have identified three sets of purposes for using Graph as an agent. First, we are interested to find out how enterprises operate. And this can then be um, made available by Enterprise Metagraph. We also need the ability to investigate and drill down to every single document such that users are convinced of the accuracy of any insights generated. Lastly, we also need a brain which helps us to process all this information, which then is our insights graph. So let's now delve a bit deeper into each of them. First, the enterprise meta graph. I have a, a graph model over here. And what we need to do is actually to map out the interdependent services that an organization can consume internally as well as provide externally. And this meta graph help us to do exactly that. Next, the document graph. We need to capture all the unstructured text data in a graph format so that there is traceability and transparency during investigations. As you can see, we are trying to map out all the relevant and um, interdependent steps related to this center node called a case. Lastly, we need a powerful data brain for the agentic chatbot, where we focus more on linking the topics found in the document graph with the enterprise context in the enterprise meta graph. Now we found this separation of graph model a powerful solution to overcome the hairball situation. And since the nodes and ages have all been rationalized at the graph creation stage, we were all also able to just merge the graphs together whenever there is needed. Lastly, I just want to end off the session by sharing a few um, takeaways. So by using graph as um, the brain, we are effectively able to avoid some of these common pitfalls, such as graphs being overwhelming whenever we want to do manual tra traversal, graph queries being a steep learning curve when we want to extend this um, to non-technical end users, as well as the fact that graph comprehension can be uh, mentally exhaustive, uh, sorry, exhausting. So this adds to the unnecessary mental load to users if they were to um, look at the hairball. So in this case, what we have done is to treat graph more as a means to the end, whereby the end is to deliver useful and bite-sized insights to our front end users. So um, that's all to my sharing. I hope uh, you have found it interesting and um, useful to any of your insights generation use cases. Thank you.